Hey guys, my name is Aaron Armstrong, and I just thought I would share a few things with you. I just finished my power hammer yesterday, and it's working pretty good. Uh, I think I have all the quotes worked out. But before we go to the power hammer and some of the designs that I've done on my junkyard hammer, I'd like to show you a few tricks. Uh, one trick that I found online, saw a guy doing, is clay. So if you're doing a project, and my video photographer, you have me. Okay, my son is videotaping us, so. Hi. There we go. Anyway, they use clay. So if you're doing a project and you're not exactly sure where you need to hit, the clay moves just like metal does when it's heated up, but you don't have to wait on the heat times. So I'm going to do a horse head and show you the different hits that I do on that. Okay? And granted, you'll have to do your heats accordingly. Tapering it out. On the back side of the anvil, we do a notch. Okay, and then I like to take a ball peen hammer to do the chin. Now, safety, most of you should know, we never hit hard faced hammers to hard faced hammers. You'll get shrapnel that way. I'm using a brass hammer, and I'm going to make my chin. I do an indent down here. Now, some like to do another notch on the other side, but I don't like to. I like to work it out from there and face it. Actually, I do my divot first. I, oh, There's a fail, which we all do. After I kind of shape the nose a little bit and get kind of the shape of a horse head, then I do the chin. And depending on time of the heat and how hot, I usually work on the horn of the anvil and give a little bit of a nose shape until I get out. Depending on heats, then I need my eyeball. And we're going to be working with a yellow heat on this is what you really want. I save working with the chisels until later because chisels can be worked with a black heat. I'm going to do a pupil, but that's the wrong one. A little bit of a pupil there. And then usually I have enough time within the heat to get a nose. Saving my chisel for last because a chisel usually can be worked within a black heat. Here. It kind of gives you good practice. If you hit too hard, it kind of gives you an idea of what you're going to hit. But the clay, and if you'll notice, I forgot my mouth. And I'm practicing this with the hammer. It gives me good control. And if you notice here, We've got a horse head. Now I can pound it to give it the shape, and most of the time I make these out of a horse shoe. But it allows you to kind of see where your hits are going to be. And if you look here, they really do come out pretty darn close. Okay, a little different. This one was made by a friend or an acquaintance of mine. But as you can see, it'll give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Okay. Next thing I want to show you before we move on to the power hammer is drawing out metal. Now I learned this trick watching a video online by Jim Poor, who makes tongs. So if you look up the video, Jim Poor, uh, tong making, he's got the demonstration. You'll see the same suggestion. And what he does, most of us, to draw out our metal, we come to the place of the anvil. Okay. He had a great suggestion. If you want to draw out your metal, come to the horn. It acts as a fuller, and it'll draw the metal out a lot quicker. And it really makes it nice. I actually have some metal in the fire. I'm going to heat it up, and I'll actually draw it out on the horn before we head to the power hammer. You're not just focusing on me. Get pictures of the shop, too. Okay. Not pictures of the shop. Get back here. Name's Johnny. Hi. If you're single, meet me. Jonathan. Yes. All right. 
Thank what? you. What? You know, good help is so hard to find. True. All right, Johnny, go back to the anvil. Back over there. That's where I'm going. At least they'll get a comedy thing. Get off the chicken. Back up Bowler Louise's. Come on. Johnny, come on. This is for people to watch. Exactly. Right. I'm going to take a nice yellow heat. We want to work our metal hot. Budweiser. <laughs> I promise after this we'll get to the power hammer. Power hammer. Power hammer. Yeah. <laughs> kind of sounded like Jaws for a second. Da -na -na. You know? <laughs> so power hammer. Right. So most of us we try to draw out a metal like this. I've been guilty of it. However, move it down here. By working on the horn and the anvil, it acts like a fuller. And then we can come back and we can straighten up when we get to a red heat. Down to the diameter that we want. I have to take another heat and square that up. I'm not exactly square as you can see, but that can be fed up. But I've moved that metal a lot quicker than it would be if we had tried to draw out on the face of the anvil. So if you want to draw out your metal, draw it out on the base of the horn and it'll move a lot faster for you. I'm going to throw this back in the fire. Alright, now, my junkyard hammer. This is a junkyard hammer. It's pieced together with a six cylinder Chevy engine block. I used the, the pistons and the crank to be able to move it up and down. And if you look online, you will notice, uh, look up original junkyard hammer, and you will see a machine very similar to this. Some of the differences is the original junkyard hammer had leaf springs. I didn't have any leaf springs in the junkyard. All I had was coil springs. So that's a modification that I made. Another modification I made that I believe was an improvement, the original junkyard hammer had some side-to-side -side play. And they ended up adding some guide rails to keep the hammer more in line with the die. What I did is I came down with a hinge system. I used inch and a quarter all thread with corresponding nuts. And then I zerked fitting, put zerk fittings on the nuts to be able to grease it. And that took away a lot of the play. Um, the cam and actuation for the treadle is about the same as what they had on the original junkyard hammer, just a little different compared because the motor I was using was different from that of the original junkyard hammer. Just back up a little bit. Don't be in my face, please. I'm afraid I'll fall into the forge. I want to see. All right. Motor's on. I ran this on 220 volts. I tried uh, 110 at first, and it just didn't have enough power. So I ran it. I uh, converted it over to 220. The motor was able to do both 220. I also changed the rotation of the direction, and I'll show you that one, thinking of it. Originally, it was going this way, but that was grabby, real grabby on the belt. I did not have any control. So I reversed the direction of the motor to have it go this way, and it slips on the pulley, which gave me a lot more control and was easier on the engine. I made a combination die for straightening and then also for drawing out. It's slightly rounded.
And that's the power hammer that I came up with that I've been using. Uh, this is inch and a half rebar. Back up a little bit. You don't have to be right in there. And I, in four heats, I was able to take it down to inch and an eighth square, approximately. But that was all four heats with the power hammer. It's only an 18 pound hammerhead, um, but I have it counterbalanced, so I could put heavier heads on if I choose to. Um, but right now, the 18 seems to be moving the metal quite well. And I think that's about it. All right, guys, thanks for watching.